Alright, howdy boys. So, in this video, what I want to do is go through sort of a walkthrough on Daisy. The closest thing I can do to a walkthrough anyway. Just go from when I spawn to where I feel like I'm food stable and starvation and thirst are no longer an issue. So, let's get to it. So, we'll see how things go. When spawning in, there's three things you immediately need to search for before anything else. First off, a set of warm clothing. Spawning in with a tattered t-shirt and shorts that barely reach down to your ankles isn't going to keep you warm in Russian weather. Second, you need a knife. I don't think I need to explain this one to you. You can gut animals, craft items, and open cans. And third, you're going to need food. This one's kind of obvious. You need it to not starve. So the main way of getting food in this update is to kill zombies, at least early on. So if I could find some sort of an axe or something to speed the process up, ultimately it's just luck of the draw if I even get any food off of them. Now the main place you want to look for gardening, like, you know, think of gardening tools like axes and stuff, is in these little sheds here that spawn outside of houses. Because they have different spawns, these are basically only going to spawn like pieces of wire, or like what you think you would find in a shed, right? Like hatches and stuff like that. <laughs> Lucky for me, this zombie's actually got a backpack on. Um, so that'll actually give me a little bit of storage, even if he doesn't have any food on him. Killing him is still worth it. There's a knife on the floor. Now that's perfect. You know, knives are essential. You basically can't survive within Daisy without them. I can now make fires, skin animals, and open cans. The knife among these three was the real keystone. Warm clothing, easy enough to find, and with food, my options are now more varied. And if I find a can, I can actually get into it without losing 90% of its contents. The great thing about a knife is that if I get into some sort of a fight, it's very quick and puts a lot of bleed on people. So I could actually get into a little bit of a hand-to-hand -hand fight. And I stand a chance against someone if they're trying to use a, like, a shittier gun against me. Now, if you notice, my water has actually dropped before my food has. Water is a much easier stat to actually deal with. You don't need to find any food, you can actually just find pumps, and these are always in the same spot. So once you begin to memorize some of the spawns, it's not at all an issue to deal with water. So... When you head into cities, these apartment buildings, usually they're not worth looting, they're almost always empty. But when you come across this, I believe this is meant to be some sort of a shop type thing, and this is like a shutter. So these tend to spawn like actually useful equipment. Uh, in this case, someone's actually been through here because I could tell by the shoes. But when you're looking for food, this is a good place to check because it can spawn on these shelves right here. Well, someone's been through here. I will actually take this hoodie and put it on. And uh, this retard helmet, as they're known, will actually protect me against even bullets. So that is a nice find. So with the hoodie, one of the great things is I'm going to be keeping a little bit warmer than I would be with a t-shirt. So I don't run through food as quickly. So you can see the water bar and it's kind of going up and it looks like I'm near the top but actually the water bar only represents the bottom 25% of your actual water staff so I can drink so much and I, I'm like a camel basically I can just continue drinking and I'll hold on to it for a really long time okay so I could stay here and drink and drink and drink until I'm full but I I'm getting a little paranoid I don't like hanging around in that particular spot so I'm just gonna continue on and the food stat has now gone to yellow, so I'm really going to need to start finding something here quickly. Okay, suit jacket right here. I would assume it provides probably more warmth than the hoodie even does, and it also gives me 30 slots. And uh, I look like a businessman ready to conduct some business. One of the everlasting battles in DayZ you'll have will not be between the players or the infected, but with storage and actually wanting to carry items. So with the t-shirt, you have a meager 12 slots. With the hoodie, I had a respectable 20. And with this jacket now, I have 30. And I'm keeping warm. So even if you're not freezing, it's always worth seeking out higher tier clothes. Because they will give you more slots. So you can actually carry stuff. 
This guy right here, he's got a little vest for me. I'm going to want to take that off of him. Um, so this is the stab vest. This is the one you get from police areas. And you know the name is stab vest, so you think it's only good against melee objects, but it's actually better against bullets. Uh, here we go. Okay, my lucky day. I got a little can of food. When you're going around killing zombies, you have to remain patient. That was around the 20th one that I killed before I got any sort of food off of him. It's all just about not sprinting so that you conserve your energy and generally trying to keep stamina use at a minimum. Okay, the rain is causing me to really start freezing. I'm going to have to hunker down somewhere. And these dress shoes will actually look very nice to do with my jacket. If I could find some business looking pants, that'd be cool too. Now, I'm able to actually use the knife to open the cans. You don't necessarily, I've lost, you could see I've lost maybe 5% of it. Not a huge deal. Ideally, a can opener would, that would make it so I don't lose any, but 13%, that's a loss I can live with. Machete right here. Okay, so, although I already have a knife, the machete is pretty ideal for chopping people's heads off. Also, the benefit is that if my combat knife breaks, I can use the machete for any of the purposes. Ah, but even better, a pair of suit pants. If I can find a sewing kit, I will look like a proper, well-adjusted businessman. Okay, actually, no, I like the, uh, the green accents from the backpack, bandana, and helmet. With my business attire now sorted out, I can begin the final step of actually becoming food steady, which is start fishing. First thing I need to do is make a fishing rod. Now this is really easy. All I gotta do is get one long stick from a bush, and then 12 rags from cutting clothes up, combine those down into making a piece of rope, which I combine with the stick to then make a fishing rod. From here, I would need to get some hooks and worms. Now hooks um, can be made from bone. So there's lots of dead bodies around here. I just need to find one and pick up the bones, which I can then refine into a hook using the knife. And for worms, all I have to do is have a knife and look at the floor. And now you see why it's so important to actually get a knife With rope now crafted, the hardest part of the fishing rod would be over. Getting a long stick would be as simple as finding a bush and cutting it down. What the hell? <laughs> I did feel kind of bad for killing this chicken that was straight up just vibing on the bench, but it was getting cold and my business suit wasn't keeping the rain out. So I was going to need food again, and also I could use the carcass of this chicken to keep warm. And while the bones, like I said earlier, the hook's now solved. Now I'm going to make a fire here, and then I'm going to put the bones to use for making a hook. But before I can do anything else, I have to go wash my hands, or I'm going to get so sick I just throw my guts up. In the rain, I'm currently freezing. I need to get a fire going ASAP. So what you do? You need a knife in order to make a fire. You cut off bark from a tree. Once you've gotten the bark, you need to go and get some sticks from one of these bushes. Yep. You go over the bark and you press combine. So you see this and then you press R2 to go over to hand drill kit. You make one of these. And essentially a hand drill kit just allows you to make a fire. If you have matches or a lighter, there. this is a completely unnecessary step. And then you get a fireplace, you put the rest of your sticks in there, and then you put a rag in there. So now you've got the fire fuel ready. You don't need a lot to cook up two pieces of chicken. So you open up vicinity again, and then you go into the cooking. Drag the chicken over, put it on the cooking slot. Just like that. Now you got those two in there. Get the hand drill kit out, you look at the fireplace and you will have the option to ignite it. And then maybe one, two minutes later, the chicken will be done. You'll visually see it turn orange, so we'll see that in a second. Once it enters the cookies, like cooked stage, it will make a different sound and turn a different color, but you have to be very quick because you only have about 20 seconds to take it off the fire or it will burn. Now, while we have that meat cooking up, the other great thing we can do 
With these bones, you can combine them with a knife to craft an improvised hook. And we all know what hooks are used for, you can begin fishing. And fishing in this game is essentially an infinite source of food. Once you have the option to fish, food is no longer an issue. While, we're still, you know, while that is still cooking, you can take your clothes into your hand. Make sure they're not ruined, because if they're ruined, you won't be able to put it back on. Uh, you sh should see I have the option to wring it. So I can just go ahead and wring it out, and this will make it drier. You can take it from the most wet state, which I think is drenched, down to damp. You can't make it completely dry. I mean, you'd know that if you ever tried to actually wring anything out. It takes about 10... Oh! Only takes about 10 seconds to get wet again. Alright. Here we go. So the chicken is done. You can tell the sound, and you can see it looks a little different. Once you actually have this chicken on you, you need to sort of think about if you want to eat it. Because when you put it in your suit pants, or like suit jacket, or whatever jacket or pants combination you have, the warmth will actually be converted to you, and it acts like a heat pack that never loses its heat. So it'll allow me to kind of go out in the rain for a bit longer, and if I have enough pieces of this, I will actually not freeze at all in the rain, or in any situation. Uh, if I have too many, I will actually begin to overheat, and to sort of get rid of that heat effect, you just put it in your backpack, and you no longer have the heat transfer to you. But I'm going to hold on to this chicken, I'm going to eat it if I start starving, but I'm going to use it for its warmth properties, and I'm going to work towards a fishing rod, and a couple mackerels. Cutting down this bush let me get the long six that I needed to combine with my rope to make the fishing rod that I discussed earlier. And here's the process of getting worms. Literally couldn't be any simpler or easier. So with the worm, you combine it with the hook, and then that'll make you the fishing bait. And to make the fishing rod, you take a long stick and a piece of rope, and as I discussed how to make it, then you make the improvised fishing rod. Uh, these don't break, but the bone fishing hooks, you will need a decent supply of these. Human bones will work, just make sure you don't eat the human meat again, because that makes you incredibly sick. But you can use human bones to make uh, hooks with no issue. Alright, so you equip it. Now I've got a fishing rod completely ready to fish. And I just need to go out to any source of water whatsoever. It could be a little puddle on the side of the road. It will actually get me fish. I don't need to go to a particular depth either. As you can see, I'm completely soaked in the rain, but my temperature is remaining optimal. Again, that's just because of the chicken. Alright. So now we just sit here and we hold for a little while. Uh, we're going to catch, uh, say, three pieces of fish. So I'll be set for a little while. Succeeds to reeling something in. So here I just caught something. I'm bringing it in. I caught a mackerel. Lost a, you know, pretty small sized one. So I'm going to catch a couple more of them. And every hook can be used to catch two things, but you do need to apply a new piece of bait every single time. So I sat through the entirety of the rain, and I'm only mildly cold, not enough to lose health, just a little bit of food. Another mackerel, this one's a little better. gonna stop fishing until I get a fish though. Okay, another mackerel. Easy. Just go ahead and eat this chicken. Actually, if I leave maybe 10% of it left, I would really have like a crumb of chicken, but it will still provide me the full warmth. Okay. Last thing to do now is prepare the rest of the fire. Alright. Now with the mackerel, I can't just put it on there. I actually do need to gut it. Alright, so I've now prepared and gutted the fish. Mostly I think I just took the head off. 
So we're just going to go ahead, we're going to put that on the fireplace some more. So with the fish now on the fire, food and water is no longer an issue. Even just, you know, water's not an issue because I can just eat the fish and that'll even give me hydration. So now I can go off, build a base, repair a car, head up to Northwest Airfield, get some PvP, whatever it is I want to do, I can do it. Food isn't an issue because of just how reliable it is. You will never fail to actually get a piece of fish. Because, you know, just dip your rod in, wait maybe a minute and you'll always get it. And there's plenty of water around to the point where it's not an issue. Either way, if you guys enjoyed, please do like and subscribe. I know I make a lot of ARC videos, uh, but I'm thinking of making some DAISY videos. And who knows, maybe you'll even enjoy the ARC videos. Either way, have a nice day.